Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and this is part two in mobile radio installation DC power sources. And in this video, we're going to discuss the temporary or soft install. Equipping your vehicles with mobile radios essentially will give you three to four times the range of two similarly equipped individuals with portable radio. For example, in a convoy or operationally, if you're getting one mile of range with your portable radio, you're going to get three to four miles of range from a mobile radio to mobile radio in a typical installation using magnetic mount antennas. So if someone hands you this mess out of the radio cache and tells you, hey, we're wheels up in 15 minutes, sort this out, we're going to talk about how you would accomplish that. This is just an example of a very simple cache radio. This is a UHF radio. We've equipped it with a microphone. It has a forward firing speaker, so we don't need an external speaker. We have a magnetic mount antenna, and we have an antenna for the frequency of interest. And we've equipped this radio with a cigarette lighter or a DC accessory plug. This is a very simple diagram of a typical modern vehicle DC distribution system. We have our battery here and our battery is fed into our engine compartment fuse and relay box. From this it passes conductors pass through the firewall into the passenger compartment fuse and relay box. And then from here a fuse typically feeds your DC outlet in your passenger compartment. Now you can see that typically most in a modern automobile are fused for between 10 to 15 amps. It depends. You'd have to look at your owner's manual. And most modern automobiles have two to three power outlets in them. And again, they're less than ideal for high current loads. This is a typical vehicle DC or cigarette lighter outlet and back when cigarette smoking was more in vogue you would often see instead of a cap on top of it you'd see a cigarette lighter riding in this position here and should you want to utilize the lighter you would merely press it in. This would create a short and the element inside the cigarette lighter would heat up and as it heated up once it reached a certain temperature the metal would allow the spring within it to retract it and you knew it was ready to utilize for lighting your cigarette. Now, more often than not now, they'll have a plug on it like this is just a standard accessory type outlet cover. One thing about cigarette lighters to remember is, because of its popularity as an auto accessory is a cigarette lighter, that an entire industry was built around utilizing these as a DC accessory plug. You have the body of the cigarette lighter or power outlet itself and then you have a shell typically your battery positive goes to the center conductor and then your ground goes to your shell this is a typical DC power plug here you can see your battery positive and your ground you can see this one here and how they're typically connected you're kinda limited to the size of conductors you can place inside these you can see here this one's soldered up. In most modern variants of these cigarette lighter plugs or DC outlet plugs have a fuse built into them. You can see they're spring loaded to make contact and you can see your fuse rides inside here. So in the event of a lack of power at the outlet for a particular accessory always ensure that you check that fuse and see if that fuse is still serviceable. Okay so we've got our outlet here let's go ahead and see just how much power our mobile radio is going to consume. So we'll just plug it in by itself and it boots up and we can see that the radio by itself just sitting there just powered up is consuming around three-tenths of an amp of power, between three-tenths and four-tenths of an amp. Now when it receives a signal, test, 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 it drops up, it jumps up to about one and a quarter amps. Now on transmit, we can see that we're about five amps of power. This particular radio 
which is a it's a 15 watt radio. We're well within our current budget for this particular installation. So now what we've done is is we've went ahead and put in just a splitter, which these are quite common. We're now charging a cellular telephone. We're powering a small 140 watt inverter that's powering a small battery charger. And we're powering our radio. And right now our current draw is about 1.7 amps of current draw. And when our radio receives, we're almost at 3 amps of current. And we go to transmit. Now we're pushing almost 7 amps of current draw. So we're still within our budget in the, for this installation. So we can see from this that it is possible to power a medium power UHF or VHF radio from a cigarette lighter outlet while still powering most common automotive accessories that are powered by the cigarette lighter or DC power outlet. This is an example of installation of a cash radio. You know, you can shove it wherever it needs to go. You run it here to the cigarette lighter and just place your microphone somewhere convenient. And the flexibility of having a radio cache with mobile radio set up like this is, is you can install them in any vehicle you want to at any moment. You can see just chase the feed line here right out the uh, under the roof of the vehicle with the mag mount antenna. We're going to briefly talk about the mag mount antenna. Now the mag mount antenna essentially has a magnet in the base and you have your vertical radiator. This uses an NMO base so you can put a VHF or UHF resonator on here. Typically your shield of your coax is tied to your foil down here and your center conductor is tied to your radiator. Now, in and of itself, this is not a very efficient antenna. It has to be placed on some form of metal in order to be an effective radiator. You can see that the antenna, without a ground plane, gives you a considerable amount of reflected power. And being that it's magnetic, it's designed to go onto a ferrous metal. We'll say this cabinet is a vehicle body. Just throw it on there write your cable in and you can see it's gonna stay in place. Now mag mount antennas are good for anything above 27 megahertz. Uh, they're not very good for HF. Magnetic mount antennas do not directly couple with the vehicle body as like a regular like an NMO mount. They capacitively couple and they are therefore less efficient but at higher frequencies that generally is not an issue in performance and because their base is magnetic uh, they're designed to be used on ferrous metal bodies okay let's say that this sheet of aluminum represents an aluminum bodied vehicle or something we want to attach it to by just placing it on here it will couple with the material and operate efficiently but as you can see there's no adhesion to the magnet a simple short-term way to deal with this is with using rare earth magnets and epoxying them to a piece of metal. Uh, this is just a piece of aluminum. And what you would do is, is if you can get on the opposite side of the mount and place that mount on there, you can see that it does adhere. Now, this does not have the magnetic adhesion it would have if it was on a steel bodied vehicle however it does give it enough to suffice for the short term on our aluminum sheet with the magnets behind it you can see how much our reflected power has dropped now in the case of a, a thin plastic roof like a UTV this also works to secure the antenna in place however we need to come up with a way to give it that ground plane effect to make the antenna efficient. The way I've addressed that is by merely attaching some shim stock and attaching these with a machine screw with a lock nut. And this is something you could throw together really quickly if you possess it in your toolkit. And this is your plastic body of your UTV or your plastic roof of your UTV 
and you merely place your mag mount on top of it just like that and it does provide you with a degree of performance and you can see when mounted on plastic with our artificial ground plane that our reflected power is the same so at these at UHF frequencies the capacitance is not giving us much of an issue let's briefly go over some of the stuff we discussed number one know your equipment know what the capabilities of the equipment is know that your templates are if not identical your templates are interoperable with one another so you can roll out a communications plan and all of your equipment will talk to one another make sure that all of your equipment has a power connector that you can temporarily install into your fleet of vehicles or across mobility platforms if necessary make sure that all of your equipment can be readily installed and placed in service by the least radio skilled person in your organization. Second is know and balance your DC load budget. We briefly discussed a vehicle electrical system and it's important to understand just what all of your equipment draws and it's the sum of all that current consumption that's going to dictate how much equipment you can operate when you're using your radio equipment and your a vehicle or vessel or equipment electrical system is like a bank account and the currency is the amount of power available and you have to balance that energy expenditure to match your mission profile plan for unique antenna solutions reviewing the different types of vehicles that you may have to install your equipment in or you anticipate installing your equipment in and coming up with solutions in advance that would work for you. And finally keep it simple. And the sum of all this is engineered in advance. You want to streamline all of your solutions so you can roll out everything as efficiently and quickly as possible. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.